Back in 2021, I was in the kind of shape that turns heads. I was 182 pounds of pure lean muscle. Never would I thought I would ever be in that condition after being over 300 pounds at one point, but it wasn't by accident and it wasn't easy. It was hard work, discipline, and a no-nonsense attitude towards life and lifting. My days were filled with the basics, but don't let basic fool you. I'm talking about powerlifting, bench presses, squats, and deadlifts. None of those fancy exercises or fads, just the basic with bodybuilding principles. I added calisthenics to the mix because mastering your own body weight is the true test of strength. And boxing, that wasn't just for fun. It kept me sharp agile and always ready doing these styles of training gave me the intensity my body has to adapt to it showed on my body getting better at the basics will always give you the best results now here's the secret behind looking extremely lean it's your diet you can lift all the weights in the world but if your eating is garbage you'll never see the results you want i counted every calorie not like some obsessed diet fanatic but like a man on a mission I treated calories like currency. I only had this amount of calories to use with each food I eat, so I chose wisely. Fresh foods were my best friends. Processed junk. I kept it at a minimum. Let me be blunt. If you want to get anywhere near where I was, you've got to eat right. None of that eating till you're stuffed in nonsense. You eat to fuel your body, not to entertain it. Get this straight. Muscles aren't just built in the gym. They're built in the kitchen, too. It is a very true statement. 2021 wasn't just a year for me. It was a statement. A statement that, with the right mindset, the body follows. This journey wasn't just about getting fit. It was about becoming disciplined, focused, and downright relentless. Now, let's not sugarcoat things. 2021 wasn't just a walk in the park. Sure, I was in top shape, but life threw its curveballs, too. I tangled with the wrong crowd the kind that sucks the life out of you. These energy vampires left me dry, sapped my motivation, and had me questioning my path. It's a rough spot when you find yourself surrounded by negativity, feeling empty inside. And let me tell you, eating like a bird didn't do any favors for my state of mind. Cutting calories, especially carbs, left me hungry, tired, and downright miserable. You might think, being hungry is a small price to pay for looking good, but it eats at you, no pun intended. It wasn't long before this constant state of warning led me down a dark path, straight into the arms of depression. It was during this time, in the thick of my struggles, that I faced what they call an ego death. My spirit hit rock bottom. Everything I thought I was, everything I believed in, seemed to crumble away. It's a hard pill to swallow, Realizing that your self-image isn't as unbreakable as you thought. But here's the thing. I didn't give up. Even in my lowest, I kept hitting the gym. The focus shifted, though. I moved away from just staying lean to building strength. It was a change. A new challenge. And with the arrival of 2022, I turned the page. It was time to bulk up and become the strongest I ever was. In 2022, the game changed entirely. I threw caution to the wind and started eating like crazy. The goal? To get stronger, I was eating for power. Every calorie was a building block for my strength. No more holding back and I ate whatever I wanted and spent much of my time lifting as heavy as I can. My training zeroed in on the big lifts. Bench press, squats, overhead presses, deadlifts and rows. These exercises was my bread and butter throughout my day's training. It all depended on which exercises I really wanted to focus on and improve my numbers over time. I was in pursuit of personal records. And let me tell you, the results spoke for themselves. Benching over 300 pounds, squatting over a 400, and deadlifting over 500 pounds became my new normal. This wasn't luck. It was the result of sheer consistency and a diet that could fuel a small army. I was definitely eating like a fat boy, but I didn't turn my back on my roots. Calisthenics and boxing stayed in the mix, keeping me as athletic as a heavyweight can be. The surprising thing, the skills and agility from calisthenics actually boosted my lifting numbers. Turns out balance and body control do wonders for your power lifts. 
However, every choice has its consequences. With the weight gain came less definition, more body fat. I wasn't that lean, chiseled statue anymore. And let me be clear, calisthenics and boxing aren't a walk in the park when you're carrying extra weight. Every pull up, every round in the ring felt tougher, heavier. The biggest thing you'll notice is how other people view you. They will notice and even bluntly tell you that you got fat. Sometimes it can strike on your mental state, but remember why you started this journey in the first place. Here's the lesson, and it's a tough one. In pursuit of one goal, sometimes you have to sacrifice another. Getting stronger often means getting bigger, and that comes with its own set of challenges. But it's all about balance. You gain some, you lose some, but what's important is that you stay true to your goals, no matter how heavy they get. Let me be more specific with the pros and cons of bulking. When it comes to bulking, there's a lot more going on under the hood than just piling on pounds. It's about strategically increasing your strength and enhancing your performance. First up, let's talk about muscle growth. When you're bulking, you're feeding your muscles more. More protein, more carbs, more everything. This surplus of nutrients is like jet fuel. It aids in muscle recovery and growth after those grueling workouts. Think of your muscles like a building. The more quality materials, nutrients you bring in, the bigger and stronger that building gets. Now this muscle growth translates directly into increased strength. More muscle mass means more power. It's simple physics. The larger your muscles, the more force they can generate. This is why your lifting numbers shoot up during a bulk. You're not just looking bigger, you're genuinely becoming stronger. It's like upgrading your engine. You're capable of pushing more weight for more reps. But it's not just about muscle size. Bulking can also improve your overall performance in the gym. With a higher calorie intake, your body has more fuel to burn, which translates to more energy during workouts. You can push harder for longer, leading to more effective training sessions. Those extra calories mean you're not running on empty. Instead, you've got a full tank every time you hit the gym. Your body's energy stores, like glycogen, are fuller when you're on a bulk. This means you can sustain high-intensity efforts for longer, whether it's lifting heavier weights or pushing through those last few reps where the real muscle growth happens. In essence, you're giving your body the resources it needs to perform at its peak. However, it's crucial to remember that bulking should be done smartly. It's not an excuse to eat everything in sight. Quality matters. You want to fuel your body with the right kind of calories. Think whole foods, lean proteins, complex carbs, and healthy fats. This ensures that the weight you gain is muscle, not just fat. Not like how I did when I ate whatever I wanted. It didn't matter what it was. All right, let's get real about bulking the wrong way. It's a slippery slope. And if you're not careful, you'll slide right down into a pit you didn't even see coming. When you decide to bulk by eating whatever you want, especially if it's fast food and sweets, you're setting yourself up for trouble. This isn't bulking. It's a one-way ticket to gaining unwanted fat. Let's break down why this approach can backfire big time. First, the problem with fast food. It's not just about the high calories. It's about the type of calories. Fast food is notoriously high in bad fats, sugars, and simple carbs. These are the kinds of calories that your body stores as fat, not as muscle. They spike your blood sugar, mess with your metabolism, and before you know it, you've packed on pounds of fat, not muscle. And sweets, they're just as bad. They're empty calories, high in sugar, low in nutrients. When you eat a lot of sweets, you're filling up on calories that offer no real benefit to your body. They don't help you build muscle. They don't fuel your workouts. All they do is add to your waistline. Now, let's talk about the worst offenders in the fast food world when it comes to bulking the wrong way. Foods like greasy burgers, fries, and fried chicken are particularly bad. They're loaded with trans fats and calories that go straight to your fat stores. These foods offer little to no nutritional value and can even slow down your metabolism, making it harder for you to burn fat and build muscle. The problem with this approach is that you end up gaining weight in all the wrong places. 
Sure, the scale might go up, but it's not because you're getting stronger. It's because you're getting fatter. Sure, I might have been eating everything in sight, but don't get it twisted. That doesn't mean I wasn't making serious gains. My strength soared, and I smashed some personal goals that took me a while to obtain. I'm talking a 600-pound deadlift and a 455-pound squat. These weren't just numbers. They were milestones, hard-earned and sweated for. I failed many times but kept it up till I finally achieved my goals. Now, if you're gunning for big numbers like these, you've got to zero in on your lifts. Make them your bread and butter, your day-in, day-out focus. It's not just about doing the exercise. It's about mastering the form and technique. You want to get strong? You've got to get smart first. Let's take the deadlift, for example. You want to improve? Then dedicate specific days to it, say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's not just about repetition. It's about strategy. Mix up your variables and intensity. Get familiar with the lift. Feel it in your bones. Understand every nuance of the movement. This is how progress happens. And here's a crucial piece of advice. Don't just drop the weights. Control them. Bring them down with precision, then explode up, maintaining the best form you can muster. This isn't just about lifting. It's about commanding the weight. Explosive power and top-notch technique are your tickets to the big leagues. Don't be scared to edge into weights that feel unfamiliar. Push your boundaries. That's where real growth happens. But if your form's garbage, if you're just dropping weights instead of controlling them, you're playing a dangerous game. Poor technique isn't just ineffective. It's a one-way ticket to Injury City. And trust me, you don't want a ticket to that place. To sum it up, if you want those eye-popping numbers, it's about more than just brute strength. It's about finesse, control, and a relentless focus on technique. Master these, and you won't just get strong, you'll get powerful in a way that's sustainable, effective, and above all, safe. That's how you make real lasting gains in strength training. After a year of heavy lifting and chasing those strength goals, the scale and mirror told a story of their own. I went from a lean 182 pounds to a bulky 233 pounds. The numbers were impressive, sure, but they came with a stark revelation about the body fat I had gained in the process. This was a classic case of strength at what cost? And the answer, unfortunately, was my physique. It's a common tale in the world of lifting. The quest for strength often leads to significant weight gain and not all of it muscle. You see, bulking up for strength can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, you're hitting personal records, but on the other, each pound you add isn't just muscle. There's a fair bit of fat tagging along. This isn't just about aesthetics. It's about the reality of what heavy bulking does to your body. You start to lose that definition, the sharp lines and contours that you work so hard to carve out. Instead, you find yourself looking in the mirror at a stronger, but a much less defined version of yourself. It's a trade-off, and it's one every lifter needs to weigh up. Sure, packing on the pounds can skyrocket your strength, but it can also lead you away from the physique you once prized. It's a balance, a give and take, and it's not always easy to find the right middle ground. So what's the lesson here? It's that in the pursuit of strength, you need to be mindful of the physical changes that come with it. Understand that gaining strength doesn't always mean you'll maintain the physique you started with. It's about setting realistic expectations and being prepared for the changes, both good and bad. In the end, it's about what matters most to you hitting those high numbers in the gym, or maintaining a certain look. Neither choice is wrong, but it's a decision that needs thought and reflection. Remember, in the world of fitness, you often have to make tough choices, and it's these choices that define your journey. In 2023, I made a firm decision. It was time to cut back and reclaim the lean muscular physique I once had. This wasn't just about shedding pounds, it was about a strategic shift in my training and mindset. I turned my focus towards ramping up the intensity and endurance during my weightlifting sessions. It was no longer just about lifting heavy, it was about lifting smart. More reps, more sets, less rest in between. The goal was to keep my heart rate up 
boost my metabolism and turn my body into a fat burning machine. But the real game changer came with doubling down on calisthenics and boxing. These weren't just supplementary exercises, they were central to my cutting strategy. Calisthenics, with its focus on body weight exercises, was perfect for building lean muscle and improving functional strength. Every push up, pull up, and dip was a step towards a more defined physique. Boxing, on the other hand, was my secret weapon for conditioning and burning fat. It's one thing to lift weights. It's another to go a few rounds with the punching bag or in the ring. Boxing is a total body workout that combines cardio with strength training. It's intense, exhausting, and incredibly effective at shredding fat. The combination of high-intensity weightlifting, calisthenics, and boxing proved to be a powerful trio. Each method complemented the other, creating a well-rounded training regimen that not only burned fat but also maintained and even built muscle. As the months rolled by, the changes were undeniable. The fat that had accumulated during my bulking phase started to melt away, revealing the hard-earned muscle underneath. The cuts and definition began to reappear, and with them, a sense of achievement and satisfaction. The lesson here, cutting requires a different approach than bulking. It's not just about reducing calories, it's about adjusting your training to focus on intensity, endurance, and fat burning. It's about finding the right balance of exercises that not only help you lose weight, but also maintain muscle mass. And most importantly, it's about patience and consistency. Cutting doesn't happen overnight. It's a journey, one that requires dedication and hard work, but the results are well worth it. Let's talk about jump roping first. For someone who's never been a fan of traditional cardio or running, jump roping was a revelation. It's simple, yet incredibly effective. It boosts your heart rate, burns calories and improves coordination all at once. The beauty of it, you can do it almost anywhere. It became a staple in my routine, a quick and efficient way to ramp up my metabolism and accelerate weight loss. But the real game changer was boxing, particularly sparring. Calling it a cardio session doesn't do it justice. It's a full on high intensity workout that tests every fiber of your being. Sparring is not just about throwing punches. It's about agility, speed and endurance. It engages your whole body, and before you know it, you're drenched in sweat, having burned a ton of calories without even realizing it. For someone who detests running, sparring was the perfect alternative. Boxing wasn't just effective, it was fun. It added an element of excitement to my workouts, something I genuinely look forward to, and the impact on my weight loss was significant. The combination of high-intensity rounds and technical skill work made boxing a killer workout for shedding fat. Of course, I was still hitting the weights hard, maintaining that intensity in my lifting sessions. But as anyone who's ever been on a cut will tell you, when you slash calories, your strength takes a hit. I wasn't lifting the same heavy weights as during my bulk, but that was okay. The goal had shifted, and so had my focus. In the realm of calisthenics, pull-ups and dips became my go-to exercise, especially for building lean muscle in the upper body. These movements, demanding and straightforward, were incredibly effective in sculpting and toning my arms, chest, and back. They complemented my other activities, ensuring that while I was losing fat, I was also retaining and even building muscle. In some, if you're looking to cut weight without losing your mind on a treadmill, consider mixing things up. Jump roping and boxing can be phenomenal for cardio and weight loss, and they break the monotony of traditional cardio routines. Remember, cutting isn't just about eating less and moving more. It's about finding enjoyable, effective ways to reach your goals. And as always, balance is key. Combining strength training with cardio and calisthenics ensures you're building a well-rounded athletic physique. When it comes to getting lean, the solution I found was surprisingly simple, yet incredibly effective. Focusing on the fundamental principle of calories in versus calories out. Counting calories turned out to be my secret weapon in the battle to shed fat and achieve that chiseled look. Here's the thing, weight loss at its core is a numbers game. It's about creating a calorie deficit, burning more calories than you consume. 
This doesn't mean you have to obsess over every single calorie, but paying attention to what you eat and how much can make a world of difference. Start with understanding calories per serving. It's not just about the type of food you're eating, it's about the quantity. Portions matter. You can eat all the right foods, but if you're overeating, you're not going to see the results you want. Keeping a mental note of serving sizes and sticking to them is crucial. The next step is to combine this mindful eating with hard workouts. Exercise plays a vital role in this equation. It's not just about burning calories. It's about increasing your muscle mass, which in turn boosts your metabolism. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, even at rest. Remember though, it's not about starving yourself. It's about finding the right balance, eating enough to fill your workouts and daily activities, but not so much that you're negating your exercise efforts. This balance is key to not only losing weight, but also maintaining muscle and overall health. If you're looking to get lean, start treating your calorie intake and expenditure like a budget. Be mindful of what you're eating, keep an eye on portion sizes and combine this with consistent hard training. It's a straightforward strategy, but it's one that requires discipline and consistency. Stick to it and you'll see the results. A leaner, stronger, healthier you. Months rolled by and with each one, I witnessed a transformation in myself that was both challenging and immensely rewarding. This time, getting leaner wasn't a walk in the park. It was tougher, requiring more grit and determination. But let me tell you, embracing the process and pushing my limits was where the real satisfaction lay. As I delved deeper into this journey, I began to notice significant changes. My body started responding, slowly shedding the extra weight and revealing the lean muscle underneath. The key, a combination of disciplined training and meticulous attention to my calorie intake. I doubled down on improving my performance in all exercises. Every session, whether it was lifting, calisthenics, or boxing, became an opportunity to get better, stronger, more efficient. This wasn't just about burning calories, it was about mastering my body and its capabilities. The dietary aspect was equally crucial. By vigilantly tracking my calories, ensuring I consumed less than I burned, I managed to create a consistent calorie deficit. This approach wasn't about drastic dieting. It was about making smarter, more informed choices about what I ate and how much. It was about understanding that weight loss is as much about nutrition as it is about exercise. The result of this dedicated effort, a staggering 50 pound weight loss in under a year. It's a number that still amazes me. But more than the weight loss, it was the journey that mattered. The daily grind, the small victories, the setbacks turned into comebacks. So here's the takeaway for anyone looking to embark on a similar path. Yes, it's going to be hard. There will be days when you question whether it's worth it. But if you stay the course, stay committed to your training and diet, and most importantly, enjoy the process of pushing your limits, the results will come. You'll not only transform your body, but also discover a resilience and strength within you that you never knew existed. That, my friends, is the true reward of this journey.